Okay, good afternoon, evening, everyone. Um, can everybody hear me all right? Thumbs up. Every good, every good. Okay, cool. All right. Um, first of all, many of you probably know who I am, but for those of you that do not, I am tomorrow. I'm the principal and coordinator here at Antietam Academy. Um, and I am now also the coordinator of this uh, program, which is called Anytime Learn Learning at WCPS. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, Dr. Willow, who's on the call with us, um, first kind of share a little bit of oversight and, and vision on where this program came from, our vision moving forward. And then after that, I'll take it back and introduce the rest of the staff and then um, go from there. So we're going to honor your time and move uh, quickly, but also we want to be thorough going through things because um, we're going to hit the ground running. So Dr. Willow, you want to start off? Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight on such short notice. Um, it's good to see so many familiar faces as I look around. Uh, we just got off our elementary uh, Zoom conference and Tim and I are learning the elementary world a little bit more uh, in both of our new roles. Um, but it's a little easier to talk anytime learning at the secondary level because that's where most of Tim and I's experiences are. I hope everybody had a great Tuesday after a three day weekend and you got a little bit of rest and some relaxation over the weekend. Let's, talk, let's start by talking a little bit about anytime learning and where this concept came from. So for some of you that are familiar with virtual learning, you know that Pennsylvania has virtual schools. Frederick County has a virtual school. I think it's been around now for uh, eight to 10 years um, is what uh, I think we, we discovered last week. Um, and there are virtual schools popping up around us. Anytime learning is where we foresee WCPS creating a virtual school. Um, and we see this as a starting point. And what we've done here is we've staffed heavy. Um, Tim will talk a little bit more about that a little later. But we have multiple staff members in uh, similar positions and our enrollment numbers are low. And the purpose for this year is to really create a week to week learning progression of what it would look like virtually within your curriculum. So we foresee most of the opportunities uh, being asynchronous on a weekly basis. So uh, think on a Monday morning, I post my assignments for the week, I post my videos for the week, and then I have a weekly check-in uh, with students uh, that need that weekly component, uh, whether it's just a quick check-in or a more detailed check-in based on how the student's progressing within your classroom. Uh, we have 10, I think, hours set aside per diem uh, for secondary uh, instructors. And uh, just to tell you where we're at enrollment right now, uh, on Friday, I think we were up to maybe three or four middle school kids. So you are talking some really small class sizes here. But it's important that we take that time to put the planning into creating um, a virtual product that follows our essential curriculum. What this is not is a get by for students. This is not a, hey, you're not doing well in day school, um, so we're gonna put you in this virtual world and just help you through it. We wanna help kids, but we wanna make sure it's a rigorous experience that would equate to what they would be doing during the day. We're not looking at giving away credits here. Um, we want this to be a rigorous opportunity for our students that after they completed this virtual course, they would have the same experiences uh, just in a different format for, um, <clears throat> you know, that they would get during the day. So we foresee you working with a partner um, developing weekly uh, lessons centered around videos, resources that students could use. Uh, we foresee weekly assignments. Um, Tim's going to get into attendance and how that works when a student completes those assignments. But we're pretty excited for this. And let, there'll be mistakes here, right? This is something that we're starting slow and building so that in the long run, we take what we did year one and we build on it for year two and we build on it for year three. So you are the first of a group of staff that we really are excited about that we think could build into a virtual school. Just for your own information, we have a thousand students in this county that are homeschooled. 
thousand students that are homeschooled in this county um, that have never stepped foot in WCPS. So just in that alone, um, you know, think of the possibilities there of reaching students. Who knows uh, with where we're at with COVID, um, we may have students that are never feel comfortable coming back into a classroom. And this could turn into a long uh, term uh, solution for them. Um, we foresee this growing um, and potentially down the road, potentially down the road, needing teachers in this uh, format to do this more of a full time thing. So there's a lot of possibilities here, but the most important thing is we've got to build it right, which means we're going to be under the microscope that we're building rigorous experiences that match our curriculum that's during the day. Uh, advantages, because I'm going to be bouncing in and out here. So the fact that you have your partner, the fact that you have uh, some opportunities here to build and work together, um, and we're going to get you the resources that you need to be able to do this. So. Again, I rambled a lot. Uh, some of you that are used to working with me, you're used to that. Uh, but welcome. Uh, I'm so excited to be working with you guys on this. And I think we have a great uh, opportunity to do something different uh, in our county that could be a model for others to follow. So thank you again. And with that, I'll shut up and turn it over to Tim. All right, thank you, Dr. Willow. Um, before I go into the agenda, uh, which I'll share most of you should have been able to access it through the google classroom um i shared it with everybody you don't have to have it up but if you're one of those people who like to see it you can go ahead and pull it up uh so the, the first thing i want to do is introduce the rest of the team that's going to be working uh with this program uh as i already said who i am i'm actually uh the coordinator of this program through which is pre-k just so you guys know is pre-k through 12. um like Gary said, we just had a meeting with the elementary folks. I am very similar to him. All my experiences in high school, and I'll be honest with you, it was kind of a little unnerving talking to those um, elementary folks uh, because they use different lingo than what we use in the secondary sometimes. Uh, so it's great to see many of you uh, that worked with us here at Evening High School in the past. So. Uh, we're looking forward to some great stuff. So I'm going to introduce the team. There are the other coordinators uh, that are going to be assisting me. I'm going to start out with our elementary person. Uh, I know she's on here and she's got to cut out here soon. So Tara, if you are on here, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Tara Berger. I am um, assistant principal at Salem Avenue. And like was said before from Tim and Dr. Willow, um, secondary world is is unbeknownst to me. Um, I've, I've spent all my my years in elementary, so, um, you know, your lingo is different as well, but I am here as part of the team and happy and excited to be, you know, a part of that and, you know, welcome and I'm sure it's going to be a great thing, a great ride here creating all of this from the ground up. It's awesome. Next, uh, I'm going to introduce Ms. Beth Hoffman, who is the assistant principal at Tech High. Um, many of you will remember her from Evening High. Hi, everyone. Um, I recognize a lot of faces from Evening High, from North High, from summer school. Uh, it's a pleasure to work with all of you. Um, whatever you need, reach out. We'll be happy to help and accommodate and make sure this is as successful as possible. I'm excited for the year. And the other part of our administrative team uh, from the school base is my assistant principal, um, who I'm happy to have on board, uh, Miss Rachel Kane Kirkpatrick. If you are here, go ahead and shout out. Hi, everyone. Um, it's nice to see all of you and have been in the interviews. Welcome to Anytime Learn. Um, I look forward to working with you throughout the year to make this the best opportunity for our kids. And then the final part of the team, well, two final people, the one you won't hear from because uh, she's working right now, but another part of our team uh, is Ms. Kimberly Pigger, uh, who is over at CES, and she will be having a large portion of the program here after I get done going through the first part of the agenda, and she is going to be our guru around our technology and, and making sure that we're engaging our students with that technology. So, Ms. Pigger, you want to introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. 
I'll try this without my mask on. Uh, it's great to see everyone. I know so many of you from Apex experiences and just my last 10 years with WCPS. So I'm here to help you with your digital integration needs, whether it's recording lessons or creating Google Sites or Google Classrooms. Be sure to give me a call whenever you need help. And then the final part of our team who she's not on this call because she's across the way working here uh, is Miss Roberta Barkley. For those of you that work evening high school know her as the payroll lady and the guru of synergy lady. Uh, the one that bugs you about posting your grades and making sure your timesheets are in. Uh, she is actually working right now on getting rosters together and mailings and stuff like that to go out to the folks that are in Anytime Learning. So you will be getting emails from her if you've not experienced uh, working with um, Ms. Barkley. She makes sure that you do not miss deadlines on my behalf. So when she sends you those emails, please know that she's doing that on my behalf, like make sure your time cards are in and so forth like that. Uh, she's very efficient at what she does and um, she is a, a very, very organized. And also I just want to introduce, uh, cause I know he joined the call, um, uh, the executive director of secondary education and see if he wants to chime in here, uh, Dr. Akers. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, sorry to be late, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting this program off the ground. And I appreciate your uh, uh, willingness to, uh, to get involved. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Um, so if you have the agenda in front of you, you can see we're going to go through the first few items uh, fairly quickly. But at any time, if you have a question, um, feel free to either throw it in the chat box or ask it, uh, just shout it out, I'll stop. Uh, but we'll also have time at the end, like we did elementary for some Q and A uh, once Ms. Peer is done with her uh, aspect of this. Uh, so as we already talked about today, start your first day of building this uh, and helping us build this. And believe it or not, yes, students will start on Monday. I know that seems like a short time frame, but as we were discussing with some teachers uh, prior to everybody doing the call, uh, we're two weeks behind. Uh, so what we're expecting for week one of this one, it would be what you did week one of, of the regular school year. So you should be already kind of ahead on what uh, we're talking about as far as planning and stuff like that is concerned. So um, let's get into what it is and what it isn't. Um, and Dr. Willow may uh, jump in here also with some additional stuff. I'm just gonna try to keep it as simple as possible for what this is and then also what it isn't. Um, here, here is what it is. Think about it this way. We actually hired many of you um, based upon the subject level you taught, the grade level you taught. And we're asking you to do what you're doing synchronously now in an asynchronous environment for this program. So we're asking you to flip what you're doing, okay? And what we're saying by that is we're asking you on a weekly basis to work with your partner, and many of you will have partners in middle school, we're still trying to beat the bushes to get some more middle school teachers. So if you're one of those single people out there in the middle school, if you know a good candidate, please, please tell them to seek us out and, and apply so we can get you some partner uh, help there. But you're going to work together, develop weekly asynchronous lessons that follow the Washington County Public School essential curriculum and that the students in this program will meet the same rigorous expectations that our students in the synchronous program, whether it's in our buildings or, or virtually, are meeting or expected to meet, okay? And by asynchronous, that could be a wide, wide variety of things, such as instructional videos, um, use of various technology, uh, Google Classroom, um, for those of you that did summer school and some of you that did evening high school, it could be some resources from Apex, but we are not locking you into Apex only, nor do we want you locked into Apex only because as we'll discuss here in a little bit that um, some students may not have continuous access to the internet. They may have the ability to upload download. So we'll get into that in a little bit. So also involved in that is being able to assess 
their ability or their capability of mastering the standards that you are presenting for the week and um, asking them to understand. In addition, you are to be available for the at least one weekly check-in for the students. And also, if the student or the family reaches out to you and has a question about something. Um, again, that's why it's called anytime learning. Um, you know, some people that not necessarily on this call, none of you on this call, but some people that did inquire about this said, well, hey, is this, what's this mean, anytime learning? As I continue to go back, go back to, and I, I know when I do it, Dr. Willow kind of laughs a little bit, is anytime learning means anytime learning. Basically, anytime, anywhere, uh, not in a brick and mortar building, such as a school. Uh, so we're asking flexibility on your part too, um, but we're not telling you that you are so flexible that you're fielding check-ins at midnight at night, okay? Um, we're saying, you know, establish some guidelines, establish some times. You're, there are two of you working together in most cases, so that doubles the availability. And the nice thing is, we're building this as one subject with two people. And the idea is around that is very simple. First of all, it's for the integrity of the program. We do not want one section to be doing X, Y, and Z. And in the second section, doing only Z to reach the same goal line. Because what's going to happen is the people that are in the section doing X, Y, and Z as far as assignments and activities and things like that, compared to the students in the section only doing Z, they're going to start talking. Parents are going to start talking and they're going to say, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is Johnny doing this and Jimmy's doing this and they're in the same class? So we want it to be the same. And that's why when Ms. Peer gets into her part, she'll talk about Google Classrooms and Google Sites and how we're only going to have one Google Classroom going to Google Site for each subject slash grade level, depending on whether you're high school, middle school, things like that. So we'll get into that in a little bit. But again, you, your creativity is your only limitation here. You got to, we, we, we hired you and during the interview, some of you I interviewed, some of you interview with Rachel and Amy, um, we, we were looking at your creativity. We were looking at your ability to think outside of the box. For those of you that have worked with me in the past and work with me now, you know that uh, I don't really function all the time in the box. Sometimes that gets me in trouble, but uh, I ask for forgiveness later. But again, it's about being creative. Not necessarily, we're not talking about reducing the expectations. We're not talking about reducing the rigor. We're talking about being creative and trying to remove barriers that exist for some of these kids. On the high school level, it could be work, it could be children, it could be numerous things. Um, it could be, and you gotta understand this, this is taking the place of eating high school. So you may have kids that are in your anytime learning program that are also going to school all day long also, but they wanna graduate or they wanna get ahead or they wanna catch up. And so they're taking courses at any time learning. Um, just like they would at evening high school, but it's a little different. We don't have a building we're coming to. Um, so again, creativity, and that's why I'm excited because I know many of you here in this call that you're creative, you have huge amounts of talent, and, and I can't wait to see what is gonna be built out of this. Um, what it's not, and I'm gonna just be blunt and honest, what it is not, it is not packets. It is not, packets. Again, we are not doing packets. This is a asynchronous learning, not packets. So if anybody, because now you guys are part of the team, you are a representative of any time learning within your school, because you're going to get questions from people in your school. Hey, what is that that you do? And what is, what is all that about? Are you just doing packets for people? No, we are not doing packets for people. All right, this is asynchronous blended learning with weekly check-ins. Okay, so that's kind of the vision of what we are attempting to do and what we will do, because I know we got a great group that can do that. All right, you just got to be willing to think outside the box, work with your partner. Two minds are better than one. In a lot of cases, the creativity that can come out. I know, for example, I'm not going to name names, but I know some people are more comfortable making videos uh, and sending them out 
to students versus other people that are not as comfortable making videos, okay? So we may have thought about that while we were doing the pairing. So some of you, um, you know, may say, oh yeah, that person's good at doing that. I'm better at doing this. And so again, you're working together as a team for the best interest of our students. Dr. Willow, do you want to piggyback onto that? Other than what I said earlier, I think the advantages here are that we are starting with low enrollment numbers. <clears throat> I don't think we have a class that's bigger than 10 right now. So how you divide that up <clears throat> amongst your team, uh, as I said, I mean, between the two of you, there's 20 hours a week of per diem uh, put aside there to build the class, um, to provide that weekly check-in and to give feedback to students. So. Uh, we recognize, depending on your curriculum and the person you're working with, there's going to be uh, some differences on how that looks, but Tim and uh, Kim are going to go through some guidelines here next on uh, some expectations to help guide that, but uh, I'd just say one last time, if I don't get back on here before I sign off, uh, just thank you. Um, and uh, we will uh, continue to work together here in the near future, so thanks. Dr. Eggers, do you have anything you want to add to what I already said? Uh, not really, but I, I do think this is a, a great opportunity, though, for each one of you to kind of put your stamp on this program. Uh, it's something that we have talked about for years. Um, but, uh, you know, Kim Peer, who is amazing with all this technology, has shown me some of the possibilities. Uh, so, and uh, you know, she showed me a, um, a Google Classroom site, uh, and it's absolutely amazing. Uh, but those are some things that, hopefully, as as Dr. Willow mentioned, the class sizes are small. Hopefully, you'll have enough time to be creative and put some things together that can really make uh, any time learning something very different than anything we've ever had before. Um, as you all know, we have uh, a population of students who not just during this pandemic, but uh, for years and probably is my whole career, um, we've had this uh, tough uh, group of kids to, to get involved in their education, uh, to get them to graduate, to get them to participate. And uh, I think this is a real opportunity to just give them a very different choice. Um, and so again, I appreciate uh, your willingness to be a part of it. And I think uh, you'll, you know, as you learn this technology or, or use what you already know, um, we can really come up with some great things that are gonna attract kids. So thanks. All right, thank you both. Um... So does anybody have any questions before we move into some nuts and bolts and I start moving at a little bit faster pace? Anything at this point in time? Okay. Hearing none, let's just, just jump right on into it here. Um, let's talk about teacher expectations. Much of this uh, that we're going to go over uh, in this area, Kim Peer will be touching on this and sharing some things. Uh, like Dr. Akers said, um, we had the opportunity to see some, some great things that were produced by both people in this group and the elementary group. And it's kind of set the tone for the expectations that we set forth for you guys moving forward with this program. So I'm just going to quickly go through them because I don't want to steal Kim's thunder and she does a wonderful job of showing you all this. Uh, so first of all, for your expectations, you're going to need to have a between, and remember, you're working as a group for most of you. Uh, a Google site, which we'll show you that, uh, a Google Classroom, and we'll be doing check-ins and we'll talk about what that looks like here in just a few minutes. We also are expecting flexibility out of you. Uh, we hired you because we felt like that you were willing to be that flexible person and willing to meet the students' needs accordingly and the family needs as they may arise based upon like check-ins, things like that. Again, we're not asking you to do midnight check-ins, but I mean, you know, being flexible. Um, creativity, again, I've worked with many of you through evening high school and some of you in my day program, creativity is key. All right, You're, I, I really feel that we're only limited by our creativity. If we say we just can't do that, then, you know, 
we're limiting ourselves. There's a way, we, we just need to figure it out. Um, and then of course, utmost importance, especially at this level is following the WCPS essential curriculum. Some of you that have worked even in high school and summer school in the past have, have noticed that in the past with some of our assessed courses, we did not offer them in environments like this. But if you look back at what we're offering now, everything is, is being offered pretty much at the high school level as far as the core academic subjects are concerned. So yes, that means if you are the English 10 team, not only are your students learning asynchronously and, and so forth like that, uh, they will be assessed when we get back to assessing. Um, same thing with government, so forth along those lines. Middle school at the different grade levels and, and subject levels, again, those all are gonna play a part in this. So again, we are really, really building something from the ground up. Uh, so it's important that we follow that essential curriculum. Um, our content folks have agreed, they're very much aware of what we're doing. So they're going to be working with you. And I know Amy and Carly have already said that, you know, they would love opportunities and we're, we're gonna build it in to check in with you guys from time to time and make sure that we, you know, if there's a question about, okay, how do I get past this? How do I, how do I uh, deal with this standard? I'm not, I'm struggling how to, how to take that into an asynchronous kind of situation. They're gonna be able to help with that and help guide us through that, um, along with us checking in at different times throughout this. So again, we're providing you lots of support, uh, but we do have to follow that WCPS curriculum. When I say out of the box, I don't mean out of the box that we're gonna go rogue and do what we want to do. I mean out of the box thinking, but following the uh, curriculum. Student expectations. Here are the student expectations. We want them for, first of all, attendance to be marked present for the entire week. First of all, let me back up. They are going to be marked present for the entire week because Mr. Jacoby has worked it out that they will be, there will be a code in Synergy they will already have for them, which they already have now that are in the, that have enrolled for this program called Blended. I think it's BLD is the code. I'm not exactly sure on that, but that's a default code for present. We are going to work through some Google Forms and Google uh, Sheets where you're going to let us know at the end of every week, first thing on Monday, whether the child met the expectations for attendance. Here are the two expectations. Number one, having at least one check-in for the week. It could be more if necessary, but at least one. And number two, and the most importantly, is showing progress. Now showing progress will vary from person to person, class to class. This is what I put in the document that I shared in the Google Classroom before the elementary school meeting started. You, you have access to it. It's an overview of the whole program and it kind of addresses this under attendance is if you have somebody that just does their check-in, avoids their check-in until Friday and all of a sudden checks in Friday at three o'clock and says, oh, I didn't understand anything, so I didn't get anything done, but I'm here for my check-in. That doesn't get them the week present, all right? I mean, they had all week to touch base with you or one of you in that team to seek for support and help. So that playing that little game of, okay, I checked in, so I'm good to go for the week for attendance does not work. Okay, they have to be also showing progress. Now, if they checked on Friday and you can see by things that they submitted in Google Classroom, things that uh, they submitted to you in other ways earlier in the week that they have been trying, but they may not understand the concept or, or the situation, that's a whole different situation, okay? But the kid that just thinks, okay, I'm gonna play this game, and I'm talking mostly high schoolers, some middle schoolers might, might play this game, but I know the expectation is check in weekly. I'll check in weekly, but I won't do anything and claim that I don't know what I'm doing. That's a problem. That's not gonna get you a, a whole week of attendance, okay? It's gonna get you absent because that child, and we'll have conversations with parents too, they should have checked in earlier in the week with you regarding that if they're having if issues or difficulties, okay? So again, that, that's the expectation for attendance. Um, and I, like I said, I uh, outlined that in that document. You can read that. It's pretty straightforward. Um, 
The other thing along with these students is this is not a program because the kid doesn't have internet. Okay. Washington County is trying to get internet for most kids because we know this COVID is going to cause us to go back and forth. We don't know, you know, when we will ever get to stage five, if we get to stage five. Okay. Let's be real. All right. Um, you know, we may be in stage two for a long time because of Labor Day. We don't know. Okay. So this is not for the kid that doesn't have internet. This is though for a kid that may not necessarily have internet in their home, but they may have access to internet through the library, a hotspot or whatever. Some of them though may have internet all the time. Now the level of internet, it may depend based upon the carrier. We all know how Washington County works. Um, if they have Antietam, depending on what level of plan they have, if they have Comcast, depending on what time of the day it is, if they have satellite, what the weather is outside, Again, that's all gonna vary, but they're gonna have some internet access. The reason I share this is when you start making your plans for each week, be aware that some of these kids are going to have to go to spots and upload and download information onto their device and work through that through the week without necessarily having constant access to internet. So, be careful about the size and remember at the high school level some kids could be taking up to five classes so be careful about the size because we don't want the kids or the parents because that's going to turn them off right away to go to a school or a hot spot not necessarily have to be a school anywhere in the library and be sitting there for eight to ten hours waiting on their stuff to download because it's so huge and so much. Also be aware that if you're one of those people that like to build in links and things like that, if they're uploading and downloading, once you download and the kid goes home and they don't have internet, those links are dead. Okay, so they're not going to get them anywhere. So as you get to know your class, get to know your kids and their access to internet and do that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I'm not saying do, it a, do an internet survey in front of the whole class or, or anything because you shouldn't be doing the whole class together anyhow, it's anytime learning, but in a way that find out, hey, are you gonna be uploading, downloading? And just kind of make a note of that because you may be able to adjust accordingly. You may find everybody in your class as constant internet. So not a worry, but again, build it for the future also. What if you get a kid later on and five weeks later is an upload download kid? Again, just be aware of that as we go through this. Uh, so wanted to make sure that is pointed out there. We also, I also touched on this and I'll go back to it, maintaining adequate progress. Unlike programs in the past, including such as Evening High School, all right, students have to show progress in this program. If they're not showing adequate progress, we're going to have steps that we're going to go through as, the, as you as the teachers and us as the administration to say, okay, what do we need to do to help this student have adequate progress? Or is this not the right program for this student? And if it's not the right program for the student, then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the homeschool who enrolled them and say, hey, listen, this, this is not working out. You're going to have to bring this kid to your SST, look at a, at a different solution maybe, um, if they're going to school all day already, maybe we just need to, you know, bite the a bullet for right now and not take these classes. They're just going to have to wait till summer or whatever. So this is not going to be a program. We're going to let kids sit there and flounder until the end of the year because the high school that they came from just decided to put them there because they didn't have any other solution. Okay. Some students are going to be coming in, and I know Dr. Akers, we talked about this at a meeting we had about this earlier. There are going to be some students coming in later that may, right now, are not functioning well with the synchronous learning, the virtual learning, and we'll give them one that one reset shot saying, okay, here's the deal. You haven't showed up for any synchronous classes whatsoever. We have this program. We're going to give you a shot, and we're going to give you a shot to the point that you can join this program. We'll do a reset. And instead of maybe getting a withdrawal fail from the class in your day program, we'll just do a withdrawal that it doesn't hurt you and get you back into the class and give you another shot at it. So again, we're gonna be monitoring progress very closely with these students. 
and you will, we will be developing some Google Sheets that you will use to document that progress for us so we can kind of all see what's going on. Okay, those of you that work summer school know that we had some great uh, attendance sheets and so forth like that that were utilized. Um, that's what we're working on developing and rolling out. And Kim's going to be working with my guru here, uh, Mr. Hoffman and so forth. And they're gonna work through that based upon what we need to see. We're gonna need you to make sure that you give us weekly updates. What's going on? Did the kid do their check-in? So forth along those lines. So we can kind of keep an eye on those things. And we also wanna keep the home schools involved and let them know how their kids are going because they are ultimately responsible for the data that, that these kids generate. So if the kid is failing, we want to make sure that the, kid, the, the home school knows about it and knows that they're struggling. Um, you know, if the kid's not showing up, we want to make sure the home school knows about it because we don't want them getting lost in Neverland out there that, you know, no one thinks about. All right. So again, that's part of the uh, progress. So kids can be removed from this program if they're not showing progress. And it's because they're just not trying or it's just not the right program for them, okay? Uh, synergy, I kind of goes right into this. Synergy, grading and attendance. Those of you that worked evening high school, it sounds like based upon the last meeting that uh, Dr. Willow and I had with uh, Maggie Kane and her group is that the high school, high school will be using a very similar setup as evening high. So yes, for those of you that work evening high, that are used to juggling some of the multiple focuses, sorry, they're not going away, you'll still have them. So a kid that's only, anytime learns only, which would be the old evening high school only, you will find them under enrolled under their homeschool focus. Those that are concurrently enrolled, meaning that they're going to school during the day, whether it's part-time or full-time, they will be under the, I think Maggie's gonna keep it named the same right now, but evening high school tab. And the reason we're doing this is for transcripts and report cards, okay? High school is a little different than elementary and middle. Those of you in middle school, you don't have to worry about mul dealing with multiple focuses. You only have to worry about dealing with your homeschool focus where you currently work during the day and then what is called anytime learning at middle school. We are actually going to make a separate school. It will be a invisible school basically in virtual land and we are going to move students to that school by what's called an X10 method of transfer which is very similar to when a student goes to like a Laurel Hall or Cedar Ridge. So you will be given a um, focus for that particular school. Here's the other neat twist about this. For those of you working in pairs, you will both be teachers in that grade book. So you will be able to work together in that grade book. Okay, you will both have access to that grade book. Um, and you'll have to work together and we want it that way. As our numbers grow, we will probably in the secondary not split sections, we will just keep it manageable for both teachers to work uh, within that grade book. And it may be, it's, that's part of that teamwork we wanna build is communication. Like I may say, I'm gonna take, uh, the, as far as putting in grades and stuff, I'm gonna take the kids A through G. Okay, going back to myself, high days. And, um, you know, you're going to take the rest of the alphabet or whatever like that. I don't think that was an even divide, but um, so, but you get the idea. So again, that will be um, how Synergy will work. Ms. Barkley will go back at the beginning of the following week. That's why it's going to be important for us to get your progress reports back with regards to attendance and check-ins and make sure that all the students that were quote absent um, get changed from the blended code which makes them automatically present to absent for that week. So she will take care of that for you. So you will not necessarily have to take attendance in synergy as far as like you do during the regular day. Okay, so we'll take care of that on our end as we go, just like, we do, like it's done at evening high, okay? 
So questions, um, I see a question, I think it was from Ms. Pauline. Um, oh, about coming in later, just like they do in any other course, they will bring in transfer grades. Um, and uh, if on a high school level, we'll just do like we normally do. You enter in, if they have previous marking period grades, you enter those in for that marking period as an activity. So, so it calculates it into the final grade and might not necessarily show up on the report card. Um, for the middle school, it's gonna be very similar uh, that we will just take in the transfer grades accordingly. Okay, so that, that's how that works. That's a good question, thank you for asking. Uh, I already went over student progress monitoring tool, pay sheet. I know you guys are all, um, this is an important part. How am I gonna get paid? For most of you that worked at Evening High School or have done after school activities, uh, pay will be done through the hub. Uh, I will be setting up a, a template actually probably tomorrow or Ms. Barkley will be helping me set up a template tomorrow. Um, and um, that template will be made active accordingly on a weekly basis like we do at Evening High. For those of you that have not used that hub uh, before, we will post stuff in the, um, uh, classroom to kind of give you some guidance on that, how to access it from home. Yes, you can access it at home. That was an issue in the spring. Some people didn't know about how to do that. So we'll give you that stuff. Uh, also, uh, just reminders about you got to put it in on a weekly basis, even though I approve it every two weeks, and then it goes up the chain to uh, Dr. Akers and Dr. Willow and so forth. Um, you have to put in your time every week, um, by the end of every week, otherwise you won't be able to go back because it closes those things out, just only allowing me to approve it. So just make sure you know that. For those of you that worked evening high school, Ms. Barkley will not let you forget that. Trust me, she will be emailing you left and right. Remember your time, remember your time. I know some of you are smiling because you remember those emails. Uh, she will continue those emails. So just be sure that it, uh, you're putting in your time accordingly based upon you know, the time that Dr. Willow has referenced and we'll make sure everybody's clear on what that time is that each teacher gets, okay? Um, so that's pay, uh, so we got that. That's, that's an important part, I know. Um, so before I turn it over to Ms. Peer, who is going to go through a lot of cool things and she's gonna awe you and wow you with even some elementary stuff, um, any questions for me? I saw, uh, I see Ms. Blair asked a question about attendance. We're gonna use attendance through our Google Sheets kind of thing and Ms. Barkley will do, enter those or correct those on the following Monday because we have to know whether the kid checked in or not. And they're automatically gonna be defaulted to a present code so she is only gonna go back and change those that did not check in. So we're hoping that's gonna be very few and far between. Uh, that makes it easier because we'll be able to do present codes up to 30 days in advance. So that's like, once we bring these kids in, you'll see present codes for the first week, two weeks already in there because uh, they're getting a pass at this point in time. So that, that's that. Um, what do multiple focuses look like? Um, those of you that have not had the evening high experience, uh, Ms. Blair kind of actually touched on that because uh, she's one of my veteran evening high school folks and she's aware of this. You just, there's a tab up at the top, I believe it's the top right uh, that you would just hit on and it would allow you to choose a different focus other than your homeschool focus. Um, and there are some people on this call that are technical people with Synergy that work on my IT team, Mr. Baboyge. I know Ms. Blair is very capable of it. Um, many of the other ones that I may not have seen or, or named, uh, but feel free to reach out to myself, uh, any of the buddy on the team, and we'll help you guide you through that if you're not used to that, okay? Um, can be a challenge to begin with, but you'll get through it. Trust me, it, it, it'll be all fine. Any other questions for the group before I turn it over? Another one in the chat box, uh, Ashley asked, just to clarify, is the expectation we are creating weekly videos of our lessons? Um, 
that's one possibility. We're not going to tell you exactly uh, piece by piece what you have to have in your weekly lessons. If you feel like small little videos of, of different things will work, uh, if you feel like uh, Google Slides will work, um, you know, the, 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 the options are basically endless. Uh, just think about what you're doing now. How can you flip that to be an asynchronous learning experience? And it may be a video. It may be a, a Google Slides. It may be, you know, a, a video from somewhere else. Uh, you know, things along those lines. Uh, so just be aware that you're only limited by your creativity. Good questions. Any other questions? All right, we're going to have a question and answer at the end. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let Ms. Peer kind of take it over from there. I will share my screen with you again, Ms. Peer, uh, so you can have at it. All you. You're muted. There we go. Sorry. I feel like I'm working with NASA right now with like the most brightest minds around. So, um, Again, welcome everyone. We're so glad you're with us. I think you were chosen for your abilities and what you've shown that you can do. Um, we just want to work with you to help you figure out ways to, to do this that might make life a little bit easier. And the first thing that we're gonna have you do is make a Google Classroom. So to demonstrate that, we've made one for our Anytime Learning staff. You should have received an invitation from it. I think I have talked with um, the people who did not get the invitation to it, and they are now into the classroom. If you ever want to check to see if people have not accepted your invitations, on your menu bar, you'll see the People tab. If you'll scroll down, you can see, and let's see if we have anyone. Um, Bethany, if you'd like to join us, um, if you need the link sent again, let us know. But anyone who's gonna be light gray has been invited but haven't accepted yet. So we've got a couple of folks. So please join us if you haven't already. Okay, when your students come into Google Classroom, they're going to first see the stream. The stream can get awfully confusing for students, especially those new to Google Classroom, simply because a lot of times your stream can be very, very busy. Um, we are utilizing it for our teacher group. And if you'll notice, the Anytime Learning Doc that Tim was referring to earlier is located in here. It tells you a lot about what's going on with the program and it's being shared. Um, and just like this document is very fluid, please know that our Google Classroom is also going to be fluid as well as our Google site for the class. Um, we're going to continually add to it and make it better just like you guys will do with your classroom this year. As a side note, when you are creating your classroom for your students, we do need you to turn off the stream in your Google Classroom settings, simply for the reason I just mentioned, is that this can become very convoluted. It often shows tons of notifications that come up, and again, with your students, that can get awfully confusing. So I will show you how to do that in just a moment. Where we want you to place everything is in your Classwork tab. So when you come to your Classwork tab, um, you should have a home base and uh, just as a quick show of hands, has everyone seen the document that was provided to principals that shows you how your Google Classroom should be set up? I'm seeing some yeses and I'm seeing some no's, so I will show you that just in just a moment. But in your Google Classroom, please create your home base. Um, this may not apply to many of our secondary teachers, but our daycare providers that came in for a training a couple weekends ago were told that they can expect Google Classrooms to be set up the, the same throughout the county. Okay, so that's why we, we want to make sure we follow these guidelines. So you'll want to add a home base. The home base would be a great place to put materials that you need to reference frequently. So maybe a syllabus or websites that you visit frequently could show up in your home base. After that, you'll want to make sure that you have a topic created for each week with your, um, your latest week at the top of the screen. So if it doesn't come in an order and it's in a different location, really all you have to do is click it and drag it up to the location that you want it in. Okay, so everything for week two that they need should be listed under here. Everything for week one would be listed under the week one topic. 
We also went ahead and put together a document about blended learning practices. And as much as I wish we had time to go through everything on here, please note that um, we're gonna go through the blended learning practices, but feel free to come back and revisit some of these links a little bit later. We also have a section that's all about Google Classroom, including one on um, an emoji website. So if you're using, like Google Classroom has a little school next to it. If you need to add an icon to it, you can do that by using the um, emojis that are provided through Google Classroom or an emoji website. Um, this is really great for some of our EL learners who may not know the words yet, um, but if you tell them to look for the school icon, they might be able to pick that out and they'll know to click on that section of it. Um, it's the same for some of our lower readers. Um, within the Google Classroom, um, there's also, um, a module on, or excuse me, the document that shows you how to organize your Google Classroom. So I'm going to click on that and show it to you. And this was the one that was probably provided to you by your principal. It goes through how to start, turn off your stream, how to make a home base, how to create the topics for each week. This is a big one if you're gonna use Google Meet. Um, Google Meet is an option. You can use Zoom or Google Meet right now. Please be aware that later on this year, we will be transitioning to Google Meet. So if this is a group you would like to start with right now using Google Meet, this will show you how to turn on your Google Classroom link, which looks like, nope, I have to go back, but that's okay. When they're in their stream, this is a link that they would click on that should take them right into your Google Meet Classroom. So it's really pretty seamless the way that this is that the products are working together. Okay, back to our classwork tab and down to how to organize. We're also asking that you invite your parents as guardians. And I'll be honest with you, the easiest way that I have found to do this is if those students are not, or parents are not populated in um, Google Classroom for you, and the majority of them are not, there's very few that are, the easiest way to do that is when you get into Synergy, copy the parent's email address and then paste it into the area where you invite the guardians. That'll help you make sure that you are actually getting the right email address in there. Then the last thing we'd like to ask that you do is archive any previous classrooms. So <clears throat> if you have students that have taken or have used Google Classroom in the class in the past, and we'll use English for example, so they're in English 11, we don't also want their English 9 and their English 10 classes showing up because that can get confusing for our students. So if you can go in and archive your classes from the previous years, that should help our students avoid confusion. Do we have any questions on that? can tell it's the end of the day. It's been a three-day weekend, and I get it. <laughs> All right, um, also, under Google Classroom, I wanted to show you a quick example of how a Google Classroom was integrated into a Google site. Now, before I click on this, please understand this is a elementary school classroom. This classroom probably took excuse me, this Google site probably took her 50 to 100 hours to create. But just as an example to show you how you can use this. So this is Hannah's first grade classroom. She utilized Bitmoji to actually do a replica of what her classroom might look like. And no, you are not expected to do this. Um, we do expect you to do a Google site, but again, this is 50 to 100 hours in it. But we're trying to create a space that is inviting for your students, a website that invites them in and that gets them excited about learning. So, um, you know, this could be a two-year project for you, you know, something you want to work towards in the future but she does include a link to her Google Classroom in here. She does include resources for her students. She gives her contact information, which is something that we'll want you to do. And we do want you to include your Google Voice. So if you haven't set up your Google Voice account, we do have a module that's available for you that'll walk you through that step-by-step step and hopefully make your life just a little bit easier. 
So that's um, just the front page of Hannah's, but I put it in here in case you just kind of wanted to get some ideas for this. And eventually we'll, we'll be sharing our classrooms with each other, um, excuse me, our sites with each other so that we can learn from each other um, and get ideas because we're teachers and we like free and we like to uh, take other people's ideas and make them our own. I've also added an area for your PD modules and resources. So if you're not familiar with this form, this should be super helpful. This is a WCPS application module, which shows you many of the different products that we are using for um, our blended learning right now in our, um, both this program and a regular classroom. So if you need to do an overview on how to use Google Slides, there's an overview, there's a training on it, there's a PD module we've created for you. If you feel like you need to up your game with Google Classroom, there's a beginner and intermediate and advanced area for that where you can learn about different things with Google Classroom. As you'll scroll down, you'll probably want to consider using Screencastify. Um, you'll use this to record some of your lessons where you're demonstrating things on your Chromebook or your MacBook. Um, there's a module on creating your Google site. Again, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Uh, what we tried to do is try to keep things organized in a way that made sense to everyone. So as you're thinking about setting up your Google Classroom or your Google site, you want to keep that organization in mind so that they kind of understand where to go for everything and they don't have to guess about it. If you're in a school that has Chromebooks and you're using GoGuardian, that's the last module we've listed in here, but there's an overview for how to use GoGuardian with your students. I also put a direct link to our WCPS um, Google Classroom module that walks you step by step through how to use Google Classroom. Just look for the skill that you want to acquire and we have added a video that goes along with how to acquire that skill. There's also a module available for building your Google site. And I hope that building the Google site doesn't scare anyone. Um, hopefully earlier today you received an email would have come from DIS, D-I-S, at WCPS. Uh, that is an account that is owned by Washington County. We used it to create these sites, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Tim is going to work on updating the gradebook information as we receive information from IT. So again, we're fluid. We're going to update it as we can. And then, of course, there's a few things down here just to make your life easier. If you want to go to the WCPS Essential Curriculum, the link's included. If you want to see what information is included on the iParent portal, it's there. And then there's a link that takes you to our Anytime Learning website. So I'm going to click on that and pull that up. And we're going to talk about our websites here in just one second. Um, the last thing on here I wanted to show you is that you do have a People tab. Your people tab again shows you who's in here. And if you haven't done the invite guardians area, when you click on invite guardians, all you got to do is paste that parent email or address in here from Synergy. That way you don't make any mistakes because I know that I can typo with the best of people. All right, you finally, you have a grades tab in here. If you are assigning work to do in here, this will populate as you have assignments available for your students. Okay, any quick questions or any questions at all regarding this? Ms. Beer, I have one. Yes, yeah, shoot. Um, relating to the website, does this website have to be specifically designed for um, asynchronous learning or can it be one that we've used for our class for many years? Um, I mean, I have a website I've developed for many years and I'm not sure how it needs to be different. Well, let me ask you this, Sean, are you, or do you update it each year to include um, like the changes in the curriculum or is it more of a resource like the, you know your list of resources that you have? It's a bit of both. Um, I haven't updated it since we went to Amplify because <laughs> I, um, it, it felt a bit awkward. Um, but I can I, I guess I'm just asking if I have to build a new one I can or if, if there's a way to tweak the one I currently have, it would be easier for me and if I have a partner. <laughs> well, yes, and hopefully you'll be getting one. Um, 
but I'll say this, we really, you don't have to really build it from scratch. We're gonna we'll provide you with that template for this. The reason why we need you guys to use a template that's provided to you from Washington County is that there are things that happen, emergencies happen. Um, you know, people might have to leave and go out on a, on a break where they are, you know, taking care of sick parents and they're not working anymore, or come down with COVID, for example. Um, or, you know, we have the possibility that somebody's going to say, you know what, this just really isn't for me. This, you know, I thought that I would enjoy teaching online learning. And to be honest with you, online learning isn't for everyone. It's not for every teacher and it's certainly not for every student. Um, so, I'd say if you could copy your information over to the site as you are as you are going week by week. I think Tim has provided you um, with hours where you can really work on building that this week since we don't have any students. So that would be my recommendation. But we have to, WCPS has to own the site that you are using so that we can continually build on it and then pass it on from year to year and just make it better. Got it. Okay, so I'm looking through the chats right now. Trying to see what I missed. Uh, Kim, this yes. is Patty Blair. Um, Patty. I asked you over this, hi sweetheart, over the summer about Amplify not being in the in the Google automatic like Apex and stuff is because it be, because it goes through Clever. If we embed or we use links for Amplify in our classroom, is it going to have problems going to Amplify? So I'm not 100% familiar with other, other than I've heard of it. My I guess my first question would be for Amplify, does it utilize Google single sign on at all? Or no. do you know if it does? Everything goes through Clever, but Clever then reroutes it through Google. All right, so I'm going to put a note on here. I'm going to check on that. I'll go talk with the science folks tomorrow. So yeah, can't... yeah, I, it's, yeah. Okay. I don't know how else to make it. It's, yeah. All right, so can Amplify be added to the Google Waffle? There you go. <laughs> because then I'm assuming any link that you have, it would, it, you wouldn't run into any problems. Right, yeah. Uh, it would be, I tell you, we, it will be easier if it's a Google single sign-on product, but I just don't know. So I'll find out and I'll let you know what I find out. Thank you, dear. You are most welcome. So one classroom for both partners is absolutely correct. Yes, and I'm gonna share those with you. And um, actually you have them. Um, so what's gonna happen is both of you have editing rights or um, yeah, I guess both of you will have editing rights to the same site. So both of you can publish to it. Um, where do we find partners? We're going to go through that in just a moment. Um, and okay, I think we're caught up now. If I have missed somebody, please tell me. Okay, so let's take a look at our Anytime Learning. I need to move my chat here out of the way. So this is a website that we created for you guys. It's for our staff. It's an internal site. We're not, this is not for parents, but this is to help you and for us to help each other. So our homepage does tell a little bit about what's going on with Anytime Learning. And it has a link to our Google Classroom page. The next page that we have is the information that has been provided to parents about um, who this is for. And it's just a reference in case you have any questions about what parents may or may not know about Anytime Learning. The next link is for classrooms and I'm going to select middle school quickly. So what you'll see in here is it's every middle school option that we have right now. So if you are the Math 7 teacher, you would simply click on Math 7. It will take you out to your template. And again, folks, this is a template and everyone has the exact same template right now, but I guarantee you by the time you're done playing with these, that they're not gonna look anything alike, okay? So feel free to change the template to make it your own so that um, you can have it how you need it to. I need a bigger screen. Everything's getting hidden on me. When you go to it in the bottom right hand corner, you should have a what looks like a pencil, which allows you to edit that page. And when you go in on the right hand side, you're going to see your tools that are available for you. So it allows you to insert text boxes, images, um, items from your Google Drive. If you want to get a little more advanced, you can do embed codes at the um, 
if you're a beginner, uh, if you're not familiar with those, it does talk about it in our module about Google Sites. You can change the layout of the page and how you want it to look at. Um, many different things, image carousels, you can add buttons and placeholders, you can add links to YouTube videos, um, a calendar, your Google Docs, you can even put a Google map in there. So anything Google related, just so you know, seems to work pretty seamlessly. With that said, you can do non-Google products in here. It might just take a little more work. So if you get stuck and you're not really sure what to do, you can always shoot me an email or call me or we can Zoom or Google Meet and talk about that. Your pages are also listed on here. There's only a home page right now, a calendar page, an expectations page, and then I just added an additional page so you can make that what you want. Yeah, anytime you see the three dots, it brings up a sub, sub, menu, sub menu where if you wanted to change the name of it, you'd choose properties. It gives you a pop-up and allows you to change the name for it. You can also change this theme. So if this is not your thing and you want it to look more like this, choose a diplomat. It also gives you some color choices. The one thing that's really fantastic about Google Sites is that they have taken accessibility into, um, into consideration. So it doesn't have a lot of things in here that if somebody was blind and they were trying to see what was on the site, um, there's, not, there's a lot of accessibility options available to them on there so that they could get a page reader and it would read it fairly easily. So on your home page, if you could just tell your students a little bit about yourself. You could include useful links here, and the one that is a must, must, must would be the link to your Google Classroom. We'd like you to add your email, your Google Voice number, and just so you know, at the bottom, I did go ahead and add a, an area, a footer, where you can add your name, email, and phone number, and that will automatically appear on every page if you add it to the footer on there. So is, there's a lot to this, and I am happy to do a PD with anyone who wants to learn a little bit more about it or you know, work on it some one-on-one one -on -one with, with me. I'm happy to do that. So, okay, so that was, let me move this one. So that was under classrooms, um, high school. You're right underneath of them. So yours looks a little bit different. You guys had a lot more subjects going on. So just find your area and click on it and it should be assigned to you. If you click on these and you find that you are not assigned to the correct Google site, please let me know and I will be sure to get that corrected for you. Another must have on our Google site is a Google Calendar. It, whenever you create a calendar in your Google Classroom, you can then tell your Google site to pull that class, that calendar in for me. So in our Google Classroom, we have the information about our PDs. We have another one on here that says anytime learning it starts today or it starts on Monday, September 14th. So again, whatever you put into your Google uh, Classroom can be pulled right into your Google Calendar on your Google site. I hope that makes sense. If not, I will walk you through that because it is a pretty simple process. Um, I'll come back to best practices. Um, I do want you to know that there is a contact page on here. So if you need to get a hold of administration or myself or Roberta, because you have questions about Synergy and which students should be in there, there's all of our contact phone numbers. At the bottom, here's the, I've heard this question, who's my partner? So for middle school, not everyone has a partner yet, but hopefully that'll be rectified. So if you have friends that are fantastic, you know that they would be a great asset to the team, ask them to apply um, so we can get you a partner, um, especially in some of the areas where we don't have anyone. So middle school, I think you said we only have four students right now, but um, I guess I'm hoping that they're not enrolling in you know, ELA 7 or Math 6 because you know, we gotta get the, <laughs> those areas taken care of. Um, at the bottom under high school, Hold on one second, I gotta move things around again on my screen. For your high school staff, most of you have a partner that's with you. Not everyone does yet, but most of you do. Um, so for those of you who are wondering who your partner is, there you go. We also have a FAQ page. And I actually just added my first two questions to that that we got in our last meeting. Um, we were asked, what if I need some paid resources? 
tomorrow is your man. He um, cannot guarantee that he can fund everything, but there are some funds available. And those of you who are wanting to utilize Apex, if you have classrooms that you need set up, I'll be happy to do that for you. When you get your class list, if you'll send me a copy of them and tell me exactly what you're looking for, I'll get the classes set up for you. Um, and again, we have a way to set them up on our end where we can pull students in from different schools into the same classroom. So in Apex, you won't have 10 classes with the kids if they're coming from 10 different schools. We can put them all in one. All right, I simply check the chat real quick. See if there's anything. Uh, I should show you this because somebody asked about the different devices that some things don't work on both. When you guys are working in your Google Classroom, and I'm going to pull this one up just to show you. When you are in your editing mode, or excuse me, your preview mode. And if you can see the icon at the top, if you click on that, as you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see there's little devices down here. So if I want to see what it looks like on a phone, I click the phone device, and that'll show you how your site will appear on a phone. The next one is for a tablet. You'll see how it looks on the tablet. And then a, the default mode as it goes to computer mode, how it's viewed on a computer. So if you decide to get real crazy and put tons of stuff onto your Google site, you might want to just use these options just to see how it is going to convert for you so that you can see what everyone's going to see when you publish your site. I had another question, it looks like. Neat, oh yeah. Can we use Apex for small snippets? Absolutely, yep. We can get it for you for whatever you'd like. Um, yeah, just let me know what it is that you need. All right, the final area I wanted to look at you with you guys tonight are our best practices and expectations. I really tried to separate this out into two different areas, but quite honestly, if you are following best practices, you're probably meeting the expectations for this class. So probably the biggest one, <laughs> that I always, always, always talk about when we're talking about blended learning classes or even fully online classes is that you've got to develop those relationships. And I know you guys do that. You've done that for years with your students. But when you're dealing with online classes or, um, or anytime learning classes, you've really got to develop those relationships and get to know these kids just like you would if they were in the classroom. And it's a little bit harder to do. I mean, you might have to do some one-on-one -on -one meetings with your students to learn more about them where they can tell you about themselves their hobbies or likes and their dislikes um, talk about their learning styles with them because that'll help you when you start planning your lessons to make sure you incorporate some of the learning styles that they know that your students are learning best from. Um, communication is always the key and you guys are going to have to be in touch with students and parents just like you are with a normal classroom a face-to-face -face classroom. Um, please, please, please respond to your students within 24 hours if they send you an email. If you have time to do it the same day, that's even better. Um, one thing that's going to be important is to let them know the times that you're not available. Now, having raised uh, two children, I know that the times that they would like to for you to be available are probably between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. Okay, tell them no. <laughs> Not going to happen because I can't tell you how many times my daughter, my daughter was just visiting. She goes to Towson and all of her classes were moved online and um, some of her professors won't do it outside of normal, what I'd call normal hours, their normal office hours. So sometimes she can only get in touch with them twice a week because that's when they're normally in their office. And so they're following that same schedule. Um, I hope that we can be a little more flexible than that. So you know, something to keep in mind, being responsive to them. And the other part of that is keeping your Google site and your Google Classroom current because that's where they're probably going to turn to first for the answers and if those questions are answered on the website and things are up to date you're probably just not going to have that many questions. All right, being prepared um, I will tell you uh, with your first time teaching this class it's going to be more time consuming than what you would do for a regular face-to-face -face class. Because in addition to actually planning it out, you then have to either record your lessons, you've got to find resources showing how to do this, 
or um, you've got to keep in mind those students who possibly don't have the greatest internet so you might have to make some handouts and you know my pro tip is if you're going to make handouts why not use screenshots from what you're already what you've already done so take your lesson do a, a screenshot and then add it to a document documents download a lot faster than videos do um, and at the high school and uh, the secondary level in general, as remember, they're downloading for four or five or even six classes. So that was you know, just to build on what Tim said earlier. Another big thing is assign due dates. If you don't assign them, don't expect them to just keep up with you. Um, Apex, if you're deciding to use that, does have a feature where you can actually assign the due dates in it. You can assign the due dates in your Google Classroom, but you've also got to be consistent and stick with them. If we don't keep the kids on schedule, they're not going to be finished by the end of the semester for those of you doing semester classes, and we're already going to be two weeks behind. So for our year-long classes, you're in a little bit better shape because you can take the first two weeks and kind of spread it out over the rest of the semester or the rest of the year. Where those folks that are doing your semester classes can't do that. They've got to play catch up at this point. Um, next one is to be organized and teach your students to be organized. Uh, this will help you both be super efficient. Uh, the next one is going to be super important, especially for our students who um, in the beginning don't quite understand any time learning and who aren't keeping up and meeting due dates. If you get to Wednesday, you haven't heard from your student, nothing's been turned in, it would behoove you to go ahead and check in with the student or the parent if you can't get hold of the student. Um, network and share what works well for you. You guys can post on our Google Classroom, so feel free to do that. If something's working really well, sometimes that's as important to share with others as what's not working well. Your classroom expectations, you got to share them just like you would in your traditional classroom. Um, with that said, this is new for everyone. Be a little compassionate with your students, a little flexible so that they can use this time to play, to learn about your expectations because it's not as easy to do online as it is in person. Um, respect is huge. Um, I'm going to send you articles about the latest research with any time learning so that you can learn what's what, uh, what's being helpful for other people. This is a huge one. And um, please upload all of your work for the week by Monday morning at the latest. Sunday night would be so much better in case they are early birds, um, probably not teenagers, but it, every now and then there's one that'll get up before the crack of dawn. Um, so have it ready for them just so they can get to work first thing on Monday morning. Your weekly check-ins are a must. Um, and we're utilizing what's called blended learning for the state of Maryland, so we have to do this. If we skip this, it becomes completely online learning and a whole new set of rules can come into play with that. So those week weekly check-ins, not optional, we have to do that. And then the last one is to simply follow the WCPS curriculum. Y'all have been doing that for years, you're probably experts on it. So, you know, whatever, whatever you need to be successful with that, let us know. Um, we're all here to help each other and I hope that all of you have a partner before a whole lot longer so that you can learn from them. I'm um, going back into the chat room. Can we use Google Voice and Meet or Zoom for check-ins, correct? Yes. You guys get to be creative. We can't wait to see how you do this because chances of two of y'all doing it the exact same way that are not in the same class are, are slim. So we're going to learn from each other about what's working the best. Um, there is a, Carissa, there is a module on getting your Google Voice number. Um, is it possible to get a Google Voice number to co for those who of us are co-teaching? I think what you can do is on a Google Voice um, you can add more than one phone number, but where that's going to get really confusing is that it, it's probably going to call the first one first, and if it doesn't do that, then it rolls over, I think, to the second number. I don't know that I would recommend that. Maybe as part of your classroom expectations, it might be a little bit easier to say on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, reach out to this teacher if you got to um, make a phone call, and on Tuesday, Thursday, and then another day, you could reach out to the other one. Um, for email, yeah, same for email. Very good, Tim. That makes sense. Um, just make sure on your either your Google Classroom or 
probably both your Google Classroom and your Google site, make sure both email addresses are listed and both Google uh, voice numbers are listed. Great reminder. All right, any other questions? And y'all can feel free to unmute. You know I'm a teacher, I can talk. Anybody got any ones? I didn't see any others in the chat room, so if I missed them, shout it out. Kim, there was one in there. Are we creating our own Google Classroom or using a template that was from Ashley? Ah, so yes, you're using the template that was provided for you. What what grade level are you teaching? Um, tenth English. Okay, so on the website. Well, I saw the Google site, um, but there's also classrooms. Yeah, you'll create your own Google Classroom. Oh, okay. Um, I'm yeah, good. you don't have to worry. Yeah, there's, yeah. And if you want, you guys, this might make your life a whole lot easier. For your Google Classroom, you guys can copy Google Classrooms. So when you're here and you're looking at your classes page, if I wanted to duplicate this particular classroom, I can just hit the copy button and it'll copy everything that's in it. So take what you've already done this year, copy that, and then adjust your dates in there accordingly. That could be a huge time saver for you. Great question. Uh, another one, I don't know if you hit, Kim, was there was a question about the site that you're showing us now. Is that our Google site or do we need a separate Google site too? Your Google site and your, well, let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. Your Google Classroom is, is your own. You create it yourself. The Google site you can create from here. So if you're like the English 9 teacher, when you click on that, it takes you to the template and you and your co-teacher are both assigned to this. Um, feel free to copy and paste things from other classrooms or excuse me, other sites if you already have them into this or start fresh, whatever works best for you. Kim, how do you get to that original WCPS Anytime Learning site, the link that's red and black? Because I can only keep just going to my own since I opened it that you sent it to me. So when I go to sites, that's all I'm given the option for. Okay, so I'm going to go to our chat right now. And I'm going to paste that link in there. Learning at, I see it now. So again, this, this one is just for us. It's our internal spot. If you guys send me things that are working well for you, I'm going to add them here somewhere. So please show off your learning, show us what's working, and we'll make it available for everyone to see. And if you're overwhelmed, if the thought of creating your Google site or your Google Classroom overwhelms you, send me an email. We'll make time to work on that together to get you started so you feel comfortable with that. Don't feel like you have to do this on your own. We're here to help you. And I think one more popped in. Oh, that was from Tim. Okay. I will stop sharing and I will turn it back over to Tim. It is Q&A time, I believe. A couple things uh, before we get into questions, a um, couple guidelines. First of all, some of you are probably wondering about, okay, when do I get to know who my students are? Roberta has actually been working on that today and, and she'll be working on that going into tomorrow. And our goal is to get that out to you in some form or fashion. It's not going to be necessarily in Synergy because at the same time, IT and Roberta are building the sections in Synergy uh, for both middle school and high school. And that's a task in itself. So our hope is to get you your class list, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest, uh, hopefully sooner. And with contact information that you can, as a team, start discussing and reaching out. What we want you to do is we want you to reach out to the students in your classes and say, hey, uh, you're part of Anytime Learning. I'm one of your teachers. Here is the team that's going to be teaching you. And give them some information to get started with as you build things. Now, you may not have your classroom built yet. You may not you know, have your site all the way up there yet but give them an idea of what to expect. And, and also basically secure your communication lines. What is the best way for me to reach you? I mean, I know many of our kids here, texting is the way and it is the only way. I can call them and they will not answer their daggone phone, but I can text them right after I hang up and they answer me within 10 seconds. It's like, why didn't you answer the freaking phone? I don't do that, Mr. Ma, I text. And so again, 
we have to adjust to that. Um, also getting the parents involved, so forth along those lines. We are sending out letters uh, tomorrow also to all our families and applicants that they have been accepted at this point and they will be getting more information from both us and their teachers as we move closer to Monday. Okay, so it, once we give you your list of folks, look at it, divide and conquer. Uh, some of you may say, I know this, this person, I don't know this person, whatever. Some of you may not know any of them. But again, we need to start that relationship building piece. Those of you that work with me here at Antietam and have worked with me at, uh, at Evening High School, you know, I will always say, you know, we got to remember the three R's. And no, they're not relationships, relevance, and rigor. They are relationships, relationships, relationships. That is the key. Uh, relationships are key. We see it here at Antietam all the time. We get kids here that are struggling in their home schools, and it's no fault of the home school per se, but they felt like they didn't have a relationship with somebody at the home school. And uh, they come here, they build a relationship, and then a lot of times I'm walking down the hallway and see them, and I scratch my head and say, remind me again, why were you sent here? Because I haven't had a single issue out of you. And some of them will share that. Well, you know, I just didn't feel comfortable. I just didn't have that relationship with somebody that I could have a meltdown and not worry about getting in trouble. Um, you know, so build those relationships now. Um, again, I'll go back to what Kim said. Please do not feel like or get overwhelmed. Uh, we got time. Um, you know, you are getting paid as of today and, you know, throughout this rest of this week. And for those of you that are in the evening high school mode, I even have to break my, my thought train on this. We are not working Monday through Thursday from whatever time to whatever time. Again, back to the title of the program, it's anytime learned. So you're working anytime that you choose to work with your partner and, and individually, okay? But there has to be good communication between both folks, all right? Um, so that is important. We are also asking that you have every week the uh, weekly plan for students, material, so forth like that, posted by no later first thing Monday morning. We would prefer it Sunday, out there on, on your site Sunday, but Monday morning at the latest. That way those kids that are ready to roll, they can jump in and, and go do it, okay? Because there's gonna be a different variety of kids in all these different classes. Uh, I think of some kids here, I mean, we can think of them where they just look at us and say, just give me my work, Mr. Marr, leave me alone. I can get it done. If I need your help, I'll let you know. And they can actually do that. And they can actually do it fairly well. And they can actually show mastery and proficiency in their subject area. That's a kid that we may be dealing with. So the check-ins also will look differently. It may be a, a one to two minute check-in with somebody that's really doing a knockout job and you can see they're doing that knockout job. Hey, you're really doing great. I see you're really turning in lots of things. They're looking good. Doesn't look like you need a whole lot of support from me, but remember I'm here if you need me. Boom, check in done. But then you may have a kid that's struggling and you may say, hey, why don't we set up a little time later on this week to have a synchronous lesson when you have some internet availability and, and do a little synchronous lesson. Okay, so again, it's going to look different. Um, some other things that were asked in the last meeting that we just want to make sure you know about, we are going to provide you with um, as much information about the students that we can. Somebody asked about reading levels. Um, Dr. Willow and I are going to work with uh, WCP and CPS analytics and make sure that we can get those things available to you so you can look at reading levels and so forth. Um, but if we do not give you information that you still think you need, just let us know, let one of the team members know and we'll search it um, and figure it out for you and give it to you as soon as we can. Along those lines, the last thing with regards to resources, if there is a need for resources or supplies, let me know about what, other, what those resources are. As Dr. Will said, we have a budget, it is not unlimited, but we have a budget, okay? If kids need supplies at home, all right, let us know. Put together a list, shoot me an email by the end of this week. We will put together, put together a master order list and I'll get Dr. Willow to order it. We'll put it together, we'll deliver it to homes. We're not asking you to deliver to homes, but if you want to, you can. Um, and we'll get things to, in the hands of the kids that need it, okay? Um, 
also resources that you may need to teach with. Uh, Dr. Willow did not share this, but I will go ahead and share it. We, and uh, Ms. Peer, you can jump in on the technical name of it, but we are actually, um, as I know your husband actually was the one that brought this in the county, I believe, with football. But we are actually uh, ordered 100 huddle cams. Um, it actually is a camera system that was utilized uh, with football to film plays and analyze that, so forth like that. Now they have a classroom version. Guess what? These, you guys that are in any time learning, you're going to get one of those cameras. As soon as they come in, they're on that boat that's coming in 20 at a time. So we got 20 right now. So we're going to divvy them out eventually. You can actually use those not only for any time learning, but you will be able to use them for your regular class uh, that you're doing during the day. So again, we're going to try to equip you with the best resources we can within certain uh, time, certain budget constraints, but we will do that. All right. Uh, I know several people ask questions about Apex. Just a reminder, remember these kids have limited, not always access to the internet. So we are not wanting any team to just basically put kids in an Apex class and say, this is what we're doing. Okay, um, it, you can use, and I was happy to hear somebody asked about using different pieces out of Apex. That is great. Um, but I'll be the first one to say that we are not going to go fully Apex. This is not fully Apex um, to solve this issue. Okay, be creative. All right. Jonas, can I add to that, Tim? Yep. One of the um, neat things that I just found out from Apex is that they have an online library of really a lot of books that are available. So they sent them to me in PDF form. So I'm going to be working on uploading them to our site so that you will have access to some books for your students. So if you, there was a piece of Apex that you wanted to use that went along with reading of Mice and Men, just for example, the book would be there for you and you could also use it to reference certain pages in it for your students. Okay. So questions that you have for us as a team that we have not already answered. Anybody, anybody, anybody? So your next task, next two tasks are this. Get with your partner. And if you don't know, you can go to that website, that uh, Google site that Ms. Pierre shared. See who your partner is, get with them, start the discussion process, start the planning process, and start the building process. Remember, creativity is your only limitation, all right? If you let that become a barrier that you say, I can't do this, or we can't do this, this is, you know, then you're limiting what we're, what we're trying to do here. Be creative, all right? Don't worry, we're gonna be keeping an eye on things. We're gonna make sure no one goes rogue on us that you're way out there in left field. But again, we want you to be creative. Uh, I go back to the example that, and I put that in the chat box when she shared it, the example of the elementary school uh, Google site. Um, uh, just, uh, I'm saying this jokingly, but also seriously, uh, two weeks from now, I wanna see everybody's high school sites to be like that and, and ready to roll. Um, it is, I, I, when I first saw that, I, I lost myself in the meeting. Uh, they kept the meeting going, but I kept spinning around because Dr. Palmer had it up on the big screen in the Washington room, and I just wanted to play with it and figure out what all those little gadgets and widgets and everything were. And it was so cool. Um, she even has, if you go deeper into her thing, she even has a fireplace with the pictures over of her family over the fireplace. And if you click on it, it tells you about her dog and everything. It was just amazing. Again, how to hook kids. If I was back in elementary school, it would have been no problem. I was hooked in a heartbeat. It was like, yes, this is cool. Um, so again, I don't expect this to get there. It's like, yeah, two weeks. All right. Uh, but let's work to, to have the best sites, the best plans out there. Because remember, you're building for the future. Uh, some of you will be with us and doing this hopefully for a while. Some of you may choose. No, it's not the thing, but you will start that foundation for others to jump in on. So we really want you to work hard on this and go from there. Final question stops before we end. So I can get out of here and go home and eat.
I sleep here, most of my staff will tell you that. Questions, concerns. All right, if anything comes up after we leave this meeting, or you think about it, shoot me an email. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and or one of the team members, and we'll go from there. All right. Thanks, Tim. Thank you all very much.